A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. I appreciate you being with us today. We're going to get to a number of your emails, uh, as well as some of the day's top stories. Uh, now, one thing that uh, we're we're waiting to see here, uh, and, and at the time that I am uh, recording this broadcast, um, we have not seen this yet, but I have multiple sources who are telling me that the Department of Homeland Security today uh, going to declare that firearm retailers uh, and firearm and ammunition manufacturers are uh, critical uh, essential businesses and uh, the the employees of those businesses are critical essential uh, part of the critical essential workforce. Now, what that means if this comes to pass, uh, and this is something that the National Shooting Sports Foundation has been uh, working on. They've been talking about trying to get that designation from the Department of Homeland Security uh, for the industry. Uh, this would not automatically reopen gun stores in New Jersey. It would not automatically uh, restart background checks in the state of New Jersey. It would not automatically open up gun stores in Los Angeles County, where Sheriff Alex Villanueva uh, said on Tuesday, gun stores are closed. Said on Wednesday, gun stores are open. Said on Thursday, gun stores are closed again. Absolutely ridiculous. This is uh, ultimately an advisory opinion uh, by the Department of Homeland Security. However, it has the weight of the Department of Homeland Security. And so uh, if nothing else, if it doesn't prompt changes at the state level, uh, if nothing else, it provides very good legal ammunition uh, for those lawsuits that are currently taking place in places like New Jersey. We spoke with the Alan Gottlieb of the Second Amendment Foundation yesterday. He says uh, they're going to be filing suit in Washington State. The Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs spoke with Scott Bach earlier this week. He said that a lawsuit was coming. It has now officially been filed. Uh, SAF, New Jersey Second Amendment Society, Farms uh, Policy Coalition, they also uh, filed a lawsuit earlier this week in New Jersey. So the litigation is not just coming. It's already underway. Uh, and again, a designation by the Department of Homeland Security that filed Firearms manufacturers, firearms retailers, ammunition manufacturers, ammunition retailers uh, are a, a critical component of our workforce uh, would be very, very welcome news indeed. So, uh, again, wish I could say that uh, that was coming with 100 percent certainty. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing rumblings and rumors. But as the time that uh, I'm recording this broadcast, I don't have that confirmed. But but watch for that. Uh, because it is uh, quite possible that we'll see that designation come uh, Friday, perhaps over the weekend or on Monday. But uh, I'm, I'm hearing what I'm hearing is that uh, this should be coming uh, at some point today. Now, in the meantime, those gun stores that are still open for business uh, are running into some problems here and not just uh, problems with restocking their shelves. They are now also having problems with the background checks themselves, and they're running out of 4473s. The National Shooting Sports Foundation uh, sent out an alert to its members yesterday talking about the backlog uh, at NICS. They say that we've heard from NICS that there is a large and growing backlog of checks in delay status. So in other words, um, if you go through your background check and it comes back normal, that that that's fine. You may be waiting a couple of hours. But uh, if it comes back delayed, they got to do some more checking. They got to do some more digging. Ordinarily, ATF has three days or FBI has three days to conduct that that check. And then after that, if they haven't gotten back to the retailers, retailers can proceed uh, with the sale. What retailers are now hearing is, OK, if those checks are being delayed, uh, as NSSF says, we frequently hear that the date being given is April 15th. Although some have uh, been reported to extend beyond the 30 days that the check is valid for. Uh, now, as the National Shooting Sports Foundation points out, this would appear to run counter to the Brady Act as well as National Instant Check System regulations, uh, particularly in states without government office closures. They say that they've been in contact with NICS throughout multiple or through multiple touch points, uh, trying to find the answers that uh, businesses need right now, but they caution F FFLs. Uh, that the delays faced in recent weeks are unusual. They say, quote, we advise you not to transfer a firearm earlier than the date provided to you by NICS. They're also working with ATF to obtain guidance for retailers as to whether or not they're permitted to conduct curbside or sidewalk transactions 
uh, during the emergency. They say with a surge in sales that many FFLs are running low on Form 4473s and other required forms, uh, and they've been asking the ATF, all right, what can we do about that? And the uh, ATF has actually responded to the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Uh, They have said that uh, right now, uh, they say that ATF has uh, informed us that it's currently limiting orders of ATF Form 4473s to 1,500 per request. So 1,500 transactions, basically. If you're running out of forms, you're going to get enough for 1,500 more transactions. Uh, the NSSF says that the ATF has already ordered additional forms, expects to receive them early next week, and that as it replenishes its supply, it will reevaluate limiting orders. Uh, if a farm retailer does print photocopies of the Form 4473, uh, the National Shooting Sports Foundation says it's important to print all six pages to remain compliant. That includes the instruction pages. Uh, they note that in the past, retailers have actually been cited by the ATF for not printing and filing all forms of the 4473, even those that simply contain instructions and don't contain any actual answers from the buyer. Uh, they say that they're continuing to work with ATF on guidance for retailers as to, uh, again, whether or not you're uh, permitted to conduct the curbside or sidewalk transactions during the emergency. They say ATF attorneys are now looking at this. Uh, they say they should have more on that front soon. Uh, and they are also, uh, again, still in contact uh, with FBI Nix, uh, trying to get to the bottom of the delays there, uh, and uh, uh, particularly in those uh, places where state offices uh, are open. So the National Shooting Sports Foundation has been doing really a fantastic job, I have to say, of uh, ensuring that our ability to acquire uh, firearms during the state of emergency uh, remains as unimpeded as possible. Uh, you know, this is something that the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs note in their lawsuit uh, today. They point to a case law out of the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, which is New Jersey. And this case from uh, 2010, I believe it's Mazzarinella, uh, is the uh, case. Got the hiccups as I'm doing the show here. That should be fun. Uh, Anyway, uh, in that particular case, the Third Circuit Court of Appeals said that, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, that making it impossible uh, to legally acquire a firearm is a fundamental deprivation of the right to keep and bear arms. If you have the right to keep and you got the right to bear, you obviously have to have the right to acquire. Uh, And yet in New Jersey... Uh, again, we are seeing the uh, governor say, no, you just simply can't because we're closing the gun stores. We're shutting down the background checks. So you can't even conduct a background check in order to legally acquire a firearm. Uh, and again, we're going to see over the next uh, couple of weeks, hopefully, uh, uh, some some reconsideration on the part of some of these governors like uh, Phil Murphy uh, and Sheriff Alex Villanueva. All right, let's get to some uh, emails. Email address, as always, cam.edwards at bearingarms.com. Love hearing from you. John writing in from Virginia. Fingers crossed on the next treatment for your wife. Hope all goes well. well I appreciate the uh, the crossed fingers and uh, all of the prayers, John, because uh, I can tell you that my wife, Missy, was able to get her chemotherapy treatment today, thankfully, for the first time in uh, three weeks last couple of times she's gone her levels haven't been good enough that she could actually get the treatment uh this has been weighing on her if you listen to the 40 acres and a fool podcast that uh, miss e and i do from the blaze podcast network uh and we do the after hours uncensored podcast uh, at patreon.com slash cam edwards uh if you hear the new one that's going up this weekend i gotta tell you it's it's not the happy funny jolly miss e it's it's pretty raw uh, is real. It's it's gritty. I suppose is the the Hollywood phrase, right? Um, she's honestly been very very worried about not being able to get her treatment. She's been more worried about not being able to get her chemotherapy than she's been worried about catching the coronavirus. Uh, so this, I got to tell you, is a huge relief for her peace of mind that she was able to get her treatment today. So thank you, John, and thank you to everybody who's been uh, keeping her in your thoughts and prayers. It is. So greatly appreciated, really. I don't even have the words. Uh, Now, John also wonder, where's Michael Bloomberg in all of this? Dude spent $600 million trying to be president and attacking guns, and now the country needs money, and he's gone dark. No TV ads or nothing. Actually, he spent more than $600 million. He spent almost a billion dollars, according to his Federal Election Commission filings uh, earlier this week. Where is Michael Bloomberg? It's a really good question. He's probably hanging out at his house in Bermuda. That's my guess. I mean, he's got like at least six of them. Doubt he's in New York. 
Maybe he's in his uh, rural retreat somewhere. I think he might own like a quarter of the state of Wyoming or something like that. Uh, but he's offered up in terms of, you know, the financial offers of assistance, $40 million to uh, African nations uh, to help fight COVID. That's the only thing that I've seen from Bloomberg and his billions. Net worth, before the stock market went down anyway, uh, estimated to be around $60 billion. So he's probably, listen, if he took a huge hit, maybe he's worth $35 billion now, but uh, that's still quite a bit of money, you know? And uh, you're right. He doesn't seem to be all that philanthropic right now uh rather save his money i guess to go after our right to keep and bear arms than to uh, try to save the world from the coronavirus uh shane who i mentioned on uh, thursday's show right in end says our family is all stuck up here in the phoenix area and other than the uh lack of a bottle of missy's hot sauce after i went through the one she sent me last year all too quickly we are good to go uh well shane i can tell you we are bottling up some hot sauce right now uh, we have the labels. Actually, the, the 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 hot sauce is bottled. This year's hot sauce is bottled. We just have the labels that we got to slap on. And uh, maybe we'll do a giveaway next week on Baron Arms Camera Company. But I got to tell you, if if you <laughs> you have to like heat, you have to like heat because this hot sauce is nuclear. Uh, it is basically a fermented hot pepper sauce, everything. And it's just, you know, we've got ghost peppers. We've got uh, uh, Mad Hatters. We've got like eight different types of hot peppers. We have a green sauce. We have a red sauce this year. I'm not sure which one is hotter. They are both liquid fire, but uh, we 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 might we might give away a bottle or two on next week's programs. And for those who don't like hot sauce, my wife has been busy crocheting her uh, her critters. So maybe we'll give away a goat or a, not a real one, not a real one. I can't ship those in the mail, but uh, but a, a crocheted goat. Or a unicorn who doesn't need a unicorn uh, in these trying times. Uh, John uh, in New Jersey writing in says, I know that you've been following what's going on in New Jersey, but our uh, D bag governor just doubled down on Wednesday. Uh, yes, this is Governor Phil Murphy. He was asked on Wednesday afternoon um, during his uh, COVID 19 uh, update about closing gun stores. And his answer was basically, he feels better. And he feels that society is safer when there are fewer guns around, not more. So in essence, Governor Murphy admitted to depriving people of their right to keep their arms during a state of emergency because he doesn't feel like they should have a gun. Well, I do try to keep this family friendly, so I can't say what I really want to say. Tough. I, you know, too bad that, that you feel like people shouldn't own a gun right now in a state of an emergency. Clearly, many people disagree with you because there have been lines out the doors of gun stores around the country right now. We have never seen a surge in sales. Gun control advocates, and I've said this before, I'll, I'll continue saying it, they're losing the argument right now. And they don't know what to do. Because they're, for, for years, they've been preaching, quote, unquote, gun safety. Uh, their definition of gun safety is don't own a gun. And now when so many Americans are feeling concerned and uncertain and afraid for the future and they are worried about, well, what happens if, you know, a third of the police department is now sick with the coronavirus and you've got uh, staffing concerns? Are we going to see a rise in violent crime? Which, again, I don't think is an unreasonable fear. Many Americans are choosing to protect themselves with a firearm for the very first time. And in New Jersey, they're not allowed to do so because the governor doesn't feel like it's a good thing. Well, regardless of his feelings, the facts are clear. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It doesn't say with an asterisk, except in a time of emergency. Shall not be infringed. That, that's it. And Governor Murphy is not applying regulations no matter how draconian. He is uh, infringing. He has put in a full stop to the acquisition of arms and ammunition in the state of New Jersey. Uh, I'm glad that he's being sued. We saw yesterday a federal judge uh, de decline to grant a uh, uh, immediate injunction uh, against Murphy's order, which was disappointing, but probably not unexpected. Um, but again, the governor's order is uh, open-ended in nature. There's no defined stop date, so we don't know how long this deprivation will continue. Uh, but hopefully the courts will step in in the... Um, immediate to very near future. 
Uh, Gustav writing in as well says, uh, hope you and Missy are remaining healthy. You're in our prayers. Thank you, sir. And uh, had uh, sent me a link to a, a, a COVID vulnerability map. Uh, this is from, what is this? The Prescriptive Analytics for Preventable Harm. It's uh, COVID19.jvion.com. Uh, and it basically is an identification of the populations that are at risk for severe outcomes uh, if they do come down with the coronavirus, uh, which they say uh, can inform resource planning, uh, interventions, outreach, and uh, other community initiatives. Which is interesting. I mean, you're looking at basically... Uh, you know, uh, uh, older Americans and then those with uh, uh, morbidities, right? So, uh, for instance, we've seen the the data out of uh, uh, Italy, and I don't know, uh, the, the numbers may have changed just a little bit, uh, showing that, you know, clearly the most vulnerable people are those over the age of 80, right? That's where the, the, the mass of deaths have occurred. Now, we've still seen deaths in younger populations, um, but typically if you have you know, underlying health conditions. And they can be, by the way, high blood pressure, uh, hypertension, uh, uh, COPD, right? It, 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 diabetes. They, they, these are manageable conditions in normal circumstances, uh, but they can greatly increase the risk of, uh, you know, serious illness or death. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I don't know how they compiled this uh, information, Gustav, but, uh, the county by county association is interesting. I mean, I think you want to look for, obviously, again, those populations with a lot of retirees, uh, which is why Florida is a concern right now. Arizona uh, does not have a huge number of cases, but that, too, uh, is a concern based on the uh, the number of snowbirds, maybe even snowbirds that are coming back home from wintering uh, in Arizona. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, those areas of the country where you do have um, a, a greater number of cases of, of those uh, individuals with uh, those, those uh, underlying health conditions. Uh, Billy, uh, right, and Billy the cab driver says, uh, Cam, I love the show. Uh, Billy, I got to say, first of all, man, before I go any further, uh, my prayers for you, man, because I got to imagine that uh, driving a cab is probably probably pretty slow right now. Although, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess people still have to go to the store and stuff, but uh, with the social distancing and the... Uh, uh, you know, uh, efforts to impose limits on uh, large gatherings. If if your business is hurting, man, uh, you are in my prayers. Billy says, uh, in New Hampshire, we have a very pro-2A governor uh, who has not, and I don't believe will, shut down our gun shops because of our current situation. As a taxi driver, I've advised some of my fellow cabbies that this may be the time to buy a handgun for protection, considering the economic situation we're in right now, uh, which unfortunately can lead to some desperate measures. Uh, thanks, says Billy, the cab driver. Well, Billy, again, thank you for riding in. Be safe. And uh, I hope you have a, a lot of fares uh, during your next shift. Again, I, I don't think it's bad advice, but I do want I, I, I want to make clear that when I say that it is not an unreasonable fear for people to be concerned about what might happen to violent crime over the next few weeks, I'm not saying that that is a certainty. And I'm certainly not saying that I want that to happen. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've got a story of bearing arms today out of Chicago where shootings, there was one homicide over the last seven days in Chicago. One. Last time that happened was 2015 in February when you had like a stretch of single degree temperatures and everyone was staying inside. Shootings down 20%, burglaries down, I think, over uh, 30%, uh, car burglaries up a little bit, but violent crime is down right now in Chicago. And that's great news. Now, it's likely going to be a temporary thing. Uh, there was, uh, I think there was a, a WBEZ in uh, Chicago spoke with a political scientist at Northwestern University who said, you know, his concern is that as the weather warms up, you are going to have more people outside. Even if you're being told to shelter in place, you've got uh, a lot of, I mean, every, every high schooler in Chicago uh, is at home and they're not in school. So are they going to be able to stay at home or are we going to start seeing them out on the streets? Um, in other words, this may, this is certainly not going to be a, a permanent reduction in violent crime, uh, but it is good to see. Again, are, are we going to see that across the country? Maybe. Maybe we will. And if police forces don't get overwhelmed, if we don't see um, you know, a reduction in force or staffing levels that are spread thin, then, then 
fingers crossed, we actually see the opposite of a rise in crime. And everybody who purchased a firearm over the last few weeks to protect themselves and their families will never have to use it. And when these shelter in place orders are lifted, they can go to the range, they can get training, they can uh, get their concealed carry license, they can continue on with their lives. But again, I don't know that that's going to happen either. I, I, I think it's very difficult to predict what's going to happen uh, a few days from now, much less a few weeks from now. So that's why I say it is not an unreasonable concern. Uh, although, again, some encouraging signs uh, there in Chicago. All right. I think we might have one or two more emails to get to. Uh, this from Tom. Uh, in Texas, a, a state of order issued for Nueces County. And uh, he said, according to the uh, the order, I don't see where gun stores uh, can remain open. You know, so in Texas, you you basically are going county by county. Uh, that's how it's being determined right now anyway, on a county by county basis. And so Dallas County originally said the gun stores are going to have to close. And the Dallas County judge said, no, they're essential. They can remain open. But in uh, Travis County, which is Austin, Texas, uh, Bear County, San Antonio, and uh, in Lubbock, uh, yes, gun stores are are basically uh, being told to close uh, in those counties. Now, one thing that I would like to see is for uh, Governor Abbott to uh, to make a a statement that gun stores are essential businesses, but uh, I don't know that he will or that he has. What is happening, however, is that a state representative in Texas uh, has asked the attorney general, Ken Paxton, to weigh in with an official opinion as to whether or not firearms retailers and manufacturers are, in fact, essential businesses. I don't know what the attorney general is going to say, but uh, Ken Paxton has been very supportive of the right to keep and bear arms uh, during his time as attorney general. And uh, I think that there is a a good possibility based just on previous behavior, uh, not based on any inside information or anything, but just based on what the attorney general has done previously. uh, I think that there is a, a a pretty good chance that the attorney general comes out and says, listen, these are uh, in fact essential businesses and they, uh, they, they, they need to remain uh, in service. Um, In fact, you know, looking at this order in Nooses County, uh, and they, one of the things that they talk about essential activities to to engage in activities or perform tasks essential to their health and safety or to the health and safety of their family or household members, uh, they, they give us an example, obtaining medical supplies or medication. Well, I, I, I mean, again, if you're acquiring a firearm and ammunition for self-defense, that is engaging in activities that is uh, essential to the safety and health of your family and household members. I mean, I'm not an attorney, but... That would be my legal argument, uh, even in this uh, county that uh, does not specifically say that uh, gun stores uh, shall remain open. All right. That is going to do it for this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. Thank you again for being a part of the program each and every day. Uh, And, uh, you know, I'm not the type to shamelessly ask you to do something, but uh, but I will today. Uh, there is so much misinformation going around out there right now that it is critical. We do have accurate information. So if you don't normally share this program or recommend it to folks, uh, but you think that it's worth watching, please let folks know that we're out there and that we're bringing you the latest Second Amendment news and information from all across the nation. Uh, In the meantime, be safe, be well, be free this weekend. Don't forget, you can subscribe to Bearing Arms Cam and Company uh, on YouTube at Town Hall Media. Also, Apple Podcasts, Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. You can become a VIP member of Bearing Arms and a VIP gold member of Town Hall Media at BearingArms.com. We're going to do another editor's chat Monday afternoon for VIP gold members. Hope to see you there. And uh, again, we'll see you on Monday with another brand new edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. <laughs>